Now that I've shown you guys how to prepare teams based on what battle format you're entering in, and now thinking about the categories Pokemon belong to and how to form teams from these categories, now I will show you what roles our Pokemon will be performing when they work alongside each other. Once again, as with previous videos, what I say in this video is purely my opinion. It may, and probably will, differ from what other, more accomplished trainers may say on the subject. Now with that said, on with the video! The team you're seeing on screen is the same VGC team I used in the first International Online Challenge Cup for 2017 in February, and they performed very well together. This team, while not the most powerful, is reliable and has answers to many threats people may bring against me. However, what makes this team strong is that each member of the team has a role they fulfill and when combined, create a powerful team that has answers to any threat conceivable. You may have your own team in mind, but just for explanation purposes for the remaining three videos of this series, I'll describe what roles each of my Pokemon fulfill on this team, the Pokemon they are meant to counter, and their team synergy as a whole. To start off, when it comes to roles, my team has a very powerful special defense wall in the form of Niheligo. With its powerful special defense stat, combined with the Assault Vest, this Ultra Beast role is to withstand even the mightiest of special attacks, not including a Psychic from a Tapu Lele under the effects of Psychic Terrain with a Choice Specs equipped. But Nihaligo offers great offensive pressure in the form of its powerful special attack, and huge diverse move pool that I've given it with Grass Knot, Power Gem, Sludge Bomb, and Thunderbolt. My Nihaligo's role on the team is to counter the many Fairy-type Pokemon, especially the Tapus, and to help counter Celesteela. However, because of the lackluster defense stat, Nihaligo needs some support to deal with aggressive physical Pokemon. This is where Coralina, my Milotic, enters the scene. Combining her leftovers with a respectably powerful set of defense stats, as well as Skull to cause burns, and a strong ability to make her special attack stronger, my general defense Pokemon has responses to major threats. She also scares away intimidate Pokemon like Arcanine and Gyarados with her competitive ability. Because she doesn't use her attack stat, these abilities only make her stronger if they're used against her. Yet, my two Pokemon are often outsped by many Pokemon, and this is the role my general offense Pokemon, Faria, my Talonflame, fulfills. Faria's ability may have been nerfed in Sun and Moon, but Gale Wing still offers the surest method of setting up a Tailwind before any other moves are made. With Faria, the speed will be in my team's favor. And if I don't need speed, Faria's Fireum Z Crystal and Flare Blitz move will allow her to power through major threats my team face, while also allowing her to preserve her health to keep her Gale Wings ability at the ready for either a Tailwind setup or a priority Brave Bird attack. Despite the firepower my team thus far brings, there are Pokemon that my team cannot overwhelm quickly or efficiently enough, and thus my team requires a team member devoted specifically to knocking them out in one shot. For this, my sweeper Lenoa is on the team. And because of her adamant nature, move selection, and high speed, combined with her ability, make her the perfect Pokemon to sweep through any threats and foes my team face. She uses a Focus Sash to keep her in the fight for at least two turns, or at least allow her to survive a hit, because with her frail defenses and glass cannon status, she will not survive concentrated damage. For general support, Alexandra my Serena is on the team to offer protection against priority moves. While Alexandra's damage isn't the greatest, her ability protects my team from all priority moves, while allowing me to use my own priority moves safely. I offset her damage output by giving her a life orb. Her primary role though is to protect against the only thing that Lenoa is truly weak to, and that is being KO'd by priority moves. Finally, for pure damage output alongside my Nihiligo, acting as a general defense Pokemon as well, is my Tapu Fini with choice specs. Her role is to help deal with Pokemon that either Lenoa can't deal with or to counter some major threat with a powerful special attack. She also serves a secondary role, and that is to offer my team a field in which they cannot be confused, paralyzed, 
poisoned or burned by setting up the Misty Terrain. Now, while every trainer has their own rules for what their Pokémon will fulfill, you as a trainer must consider what roles your Pokémon will be filling on your team. Are they there to help deal with a certain Pokémon? Are they on to pressure away certain strategies? Are they geared towards setting up certain moves? Or are they meant simply to endure certain types of attacks? All these questions and more you must consider when forming your team. But remember, each Pokémon, no matter their category, should have a role on your team. Also, remember that no matter how small each role is, every role is important for your entire team's strategy to work. In our next video, I'll tell you about the threats your Pokémon on your team will need to deal with and how you should prepare your counters accordingly. Until next time, my tacticians. Hey, 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 hey,